Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a pair of mittens with a heart. Um, we're going to be doing it on a small Christmas ornament size canvas, and I'll be showing you also how to kind of personalize it and put names, add names to it or dates or um, just kind of make it more personal so you can do like a whole group of these for friends and family if you wanted to. Um, I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show, so if you've got questions during the show, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference photo. I thought it was really cute and um, I, I realized when I was uh, getting ready to do it on a larger canvas um, that uh, it would really crop pretty well and work really well on a small um, canvas. So I decided to switch it up from a large canvas to a small four by four inch um, canvas. And uh, this can be just made into an ornament. You can do a little eye screw right at the top here or, uh, you know, and hang a ribbon, or you could just do ribbon from the corners and hot glue them from the back, um, anything like that. There's all kinds of different sizes of these little mini canvases out there now. And uh, so you could use, you know, smaller ones if you have the three inch or whatever, it can, it can uh, adapt to whatever size you have. Let me go over our colors really quick. We're going to just do a simple basic palette. We've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, cadmium red, medium, cadmium yellow, medium, uh, un ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. If you wanted to do your mittens in a color, you could do that. You could change the color of the heart. There's a there's hundred different ways you could customize this uh, for you, uh, your needs, and your family. So... Um, you know, you don't have to stick with the palette that I've got here. The uh, blue and the burnt umber are going to be for the gray in the mittens. And um, then we're going to use the red for the heart, obviously. But if you wanted to change that color to something else, you could. All right. Understood. <laughs> so is this photographer also published in National Ge Geographic? No. Probably not. No. This was Shutterstock, though. So okay. I've, I've been using them for a while now. I really like their service. And real quick, somebody asked if they have a watercolor canvas. Ooh, yeah. Can they use that and just seal it with a gesso? Or Yeah, would, okay. uh -huh, absolutely. Yep, sure could. And I think you can paint on a watercolor canvas with acrylics, no, no problem. It's just that it might be a little bit more porous and, uh, you know, um, if you have watered down paint, it'll kind of bleed out a little bit maybe, but I think it would work fine even if you didn't gesso it. Um, so I've got a few basic brushes that I'll be using. This is a Princeton uh, number four filbert, just doing some dabs uh, in the background. I've got a number a quarter inch velvet touch angle shader for some of the detail on the mittens. And then I've got a couple smaller uh, round brushes, a number three zero and a number one uh, round in the select, Princeton select. I've got a fan brush for our splattering, which we're going to do even though it's not in the picture mm -hmm. because, you know, <laughs> because... Because we didn't splatter. splatter the last time. Because hashtag splatters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number one round in the 6100 series. Uh, and then I've got the Willis Blender quarter inch um, for... We're going to kind of, you know, felt it, make it look like felt. So this will kind of help give us a little bit texture. Um, but if you don't have this brush, you could just use a, you know, stiff bristle brush that, that'll give you a little bit of texture on here. I've also got a 3 8 inch Deerfoot stippler that I might use for some of the background just to kind of give it that fuzzy look. All right. Let me go over the drawing really fast. It's really easy to draw. I'm going to use another little mini canvas to show you how to do it. So, um... Really, you're going to just kind of figure out where you want to put your heart. It's going to fit kind of in the, if this is the dead center of our canvas right here. So we're going to be uh, almost equal distance from the top and bottom. So if you kind of make your mark here, you can kind of make a mark here and down here um, for your heart. And it is going to fit in within the third of our canvas. So don't make it any bigger than that. So you want it to be no bigger than right in here. Um, actually right about here. And right in, right in the middle is good. Just about everybody knows how to do a heart, so not, not hard to do. 
And since this is felt, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect or crisp edges because, you know, it's it's supposed to look kind of handmade and felted. Um, so we're going to do stitched lines around it. And I'm going to show you also how to do like little stitched name in the um, ornament as well. Okay, so once you've got your heart on there, then you just kind of have to uh, come down here and kind of split it in half. So here's our first mitten, and this one's kind of a little bit higher than the other one. And right up here, you're going to have the base of this one. The sides curve in a little bit like this, and they angle out just a little bit. So this, this hand is kind of uh, angled this way, so you can kind of do the, the arm or, you know, the arm if you want to just kind of keep your lines in uh, going in the right direction. Then you're going to curve it down in, and then you're going to come out like this and up over to create that rounded cuff right there. Then on this side, you're going to curve it out again, back in, and then out. This is going to be a little bit wider than this up here. So the top part of your mittens are going to be kind of squared off little bit super easy to draw this um, I think even kids could probably do this about halfway down here uh, about halfway down in between here you're going to do the thumb it's going to curve up and out like that so just curve it out from the heart and curve it down and then it's just going to curve in like this right about halfway on that heart is where you're Thumb is going to kind of curve in like that. And there's your wrist, okay? So there's that mitten, and then this mitten is going to be a little bit lower. It's going to come real close to the heart on this side. Like that. Then this thumb is going to be sticking out right here, and it's going to come out like this, almost straight down here. And right about where this cur cuff is, right about here, you're going to do the other cuff coming up this way. And kind of do them about the same width. This one is kind of covered by this one just a little bit. So a little bit of that is covered up. So you can kind of do this little curve and it's going to come all the way down to the bottom of this canvas here. And you're going to angle it just like this. This, bot this part of the mitten is going um, behind it. So if you were to draw the whole mitten, it would be like that behind it. So it's kind of tucked up underneath this one. They're kind of actually sort of smushed together a little bit right there. Um, and then this thumb curves in right here. You're not really seeing the rest of this thumb because it's kind of hidden behind the heart. And then this one, this cuff kind of just curves down and under. And then you do this curve like this again. And there's the wrist. Okay, so there's our little mittens. Um, we've got our two. Um, if we wanted to, we can, you know, put names on them. We'll see. I may just paint the one and uh, we'll see how fast this goes. So didn't want to go too long since it's a Tuesday night. I'm going to try to keep it to about an hour. So we're going to paint the one I drew first? Because <laughs> you said it's a simple like child could do it. So you, I, I you, think you're calling me out here. You should have drawn it. I should have had you draw one. Well, I think it's really special. Um, myself, I, you know, whenever I did my project with my kids' classes and with my own kids, I really made sure that I didn't, uh, the tendency is to kind of want to try to fix things if you see, you know, a problem or, you know, a mistake. But I really think that kids' art is is special. Um, they have a special way of seeing the world. So I show them how to do it. And, you know, if they ask for help, I would give them, give it to them. But if they don't, I just let them go and do their own thing. And they always would come up with things that were just really surprising and, and much more interesting than what I could have come up with myself. So, um, I would just encourage you, if you're doing this with your kids to just go ahead and let them, you know, draw it themselves. Um, you know, you can help them show, show them, you know, how to do it, obviously, or, uh, you know, fix problems if they, you know, get stuck or frustrated. But um, I really think that this is one that they could have a lot of fun with. We have a special guest in the house tonight. Oh, 
somebody from Arizona. My Aunt Nancy? Yeah. <gasps> Nancy. Hey. Oh. Actually, my Aunt Nancy. I actually wish we lived closer. It's Aunt Nancy. Aunt Nancy, sorry, yeah. Come on, get it right. <laughs> Aunt Nancy. Aunt Nancy. Yes, to everybody. She would make fun of me because I'm from the Northeast and <laughs> we say aunt instead of aunt. <laughs> and it says Aunt Nancy. Aunt Nancy. Very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. All right, I've mixed up some green with my ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium. You saw me go on here with the white all the way around, did it nice and thick. Um, that's really important because I want to have time to be able to blend this other color in. So I did really thick with the white and I'm just going to kind of go in here and make these kind of almost like little leaf shapes in the background of the snow around it. If you want to make these more, you know, realistic, you can totally do that. That'd be awesome. Whatever you want to do with yours. I'm just kind of going with that blurry look that's in the background of the picture in mine. So. And I have lots of other uh, tutorials that show how to kind of do realistic branches. So probably the candle one from last year was one of the better ones. Um, and we'll be doing a candle again in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited. I found a black and white candle um, one that really looking forward to. So I'm just kind of doing sort of the center line first and then sort of just kind of coming off at an angle on either side um, to create the little wispy pine branches. And that's all I'm going to do, I think. Just leave it like that. Very soft and subtle. Cleaning that out. I'm going to grab my angle brush, my little quarter inch angle brush, and I'm going to mix up a good little bit of my black, which is dark gray, really. It's the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture that I really love. You can make it a little bit more blue, a little bit more brown, just however much uh, you add. Usually about 50-50 is about right for a good... Oh, there we go. There's Mark's hearts, hands. I like it. See where you're going with that. It's really good. You can do better. <laughs> okay. I, I love it, honey. I don't want to change a thing. Oh, it's with stick hands here. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Let's see what I... This is... She's secretly crying for help, everyone. <laughs> She's blinking. No, this is my... This is my... <laughs> I'm... I'm just grateful that I have folks who really do like art in my life. <laughs> Mark is not one of them, but he is really supportive, so that makes it all up. It's all the difference. <laughs> doesn't matter if he can do art as long as he supports me in my art. That's all that matters. I've seen a lot of famous art because of you. So, And he, he tried when we were first married. He did try. It just wasn't for him. It's just totally fine. Yeah, you put me in my place. Oh, whatever. You said amateur, sit down. I did not. <laughs> I never ever said that. No, she didn't. <laughs> but I did kind of mock her at the beginning, saying that anybody could paint that. And she was like, okay, show me. And okay, so not everybody when, can paint when, that. When did you say that? I don't think you did. Well, when we did the watercoloring. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I think we okay. burned mine. Yours still exists, so it's okay. I don't know where yours is. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. All right, so I'm just kind of going around the heart with a little bit of this dark. And I want to kind of darken up that. I've got too much white in my brush. It's turning it kind of gray, light gray. But I want to leave that little line right there of the really dark. There we go. Getting that on there. There, and then there. 
there's really dark right in here. And if it's really not dark enough for you, you can always add black. I mean, you can just use black. So that's totally fine. You don't want to have to mix this gray color. You can use black instead and mix it with your white and add a little bit of blue or something and it'll get something close. All right, so I'm just kind of dabbing this on. I'm not trying to do it smoothly because this is, you know, got that kind of textured mitten. So I'm just going to kind of dabbing along that ed edge. So I'm getting kind of a fuzzy edges. So Craig is in chat. Uh-huh. And he's bragging that he's the only one out there that, who has a mark painting. Oh, really? Yeah, from the houses. <gasps> That's right. He does. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. You, that might be worth something to someday, Craig. I would hold on to that. Partially painted with my feet. <laughs> so. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, you were here. I don't remember you doing Well, I was trying to man chat. Uh, I, I'll never make fun of you for... <laughs> not listening to me during the shows anymore because that was that was difficult. I was trying to keep up with everything. So obviously I missed that. I was I'm sure I was there. I just don't remember that. I blocked it out. It was so traumatizing. <laughs> okay, somebody has an art question. Yes. They want to know are the smaller canvases more textured than the larger ones? Yes, this one is definitely you can kind of see that. Um, which actually in this case helps us because um, we want that texture. But if you're trying to do like, you know, really smooth lettering and stuff like that, it can be a little bit more difficult. But you can just gesso your canvas a couple of times uh, to get it more smooth and it'll it'll even that out. So you can work around it if you don't want the texture. But in our case, we do. But yes, they do. They tend to... Uh, tend to be a little bit cheaper quality. These ones are Dick Blick. I don't, I don't, uh, the um, Fredericks don't have this size. So I would have be, I would be using Fredericks, but I, they didn't have this particular size. I like to use a four by four for ornaments. I just think it's a good size. It's big enough to get some detail, but not so big that it's like overwhelms your tree. Um, the little three by three inch canvases tend to be a lot cheaper quality. Um, and will definitely, you know, be thinner and um, maybe not quite as high quality. So I'm going to do some dark. So I'm going to start out with the dark there. I'm going to do a little bit more dark right along that heart, right in that shadow. A little bit right there. Just going back in there and adding a little bit of this dark shadow. Now the cuff. I'm going dark because we're going to we're going to add light on top. We're going to add our our uh, highlights on top. So we want a little bit of dark darker. Um, so if you're doing this in a color, like if you were doing a you know a red mitten or a uh, you know, green mitten or something like that. I would just go um, do this in kind of a medium tone, do your darkest parts the same places that I'm doing it. So just try to get your values about the same as this. And uh, you should you can do it in any color you want. And uh, really you can add, like if you're doing it in red, you can use either purple or black for your shadow. You could add this color uh, gray to your, um, to the red to get your darker tone um if you want you know if you're trying to do it like a cherry red then kind of like a burnt umber or a black is probably your best bet if you're doing kind of a purpley red or a burgundy you can use um, purple as your uh, dark tone for your red um, if you're doing green um, black is a good undertone to use or you know for the to darken your color you could use this gray or burnt umber um, even purple um, with blue 
obviously this this gray color here um, if you're doing like teal I would just use a darker teal color like um, thalo blue and thalo green together um, or thalo blue plus burnt sienna makes a really pretty teal I'm trying to think about other color combinations if you're doing yellow mittens you you would want to use like a burnt sienna probably for your dark areas um, burnt sienna plus a little bit of yellow maybe I'm trying to think what else purple you would just use a dark you know doxazine purple and then uh, add white to it so that one would be really easy same thing with the quinacridone magenta. You can use it full strength and just add your white to it. Any of these colors that are really, really dark, like the burnt sienna or, burnt, or ultramarine blue or any of the, or not, I'm sorry, not burnt sienna, um, ultramarine blue with thalo blue, thalo green, you know, those, most of those are going to be dark enough on their own. Um, maybe not thalo green, but definitely the thalo blue and ultramarine blue. So... Okay, so just adding a little bit of white right here where the cuff is folded, adding a little bit of it right here where that cuff is folded. Really cute. All right, let's add some white. I'm just going to use a lighter gray for the sleeve of the person. You want this to go straight in here. So... I'm just going to kind of do these little lines here in it, try to get just a little bit of like that. It doesn't have to be really detailed there. This is just the sweater sleeves showing. Go a little bit darker and just kind of do some little So how are you doing like tonight? That. How am I doing? Yeah, we just jumped in and took off here. We did. Say hi doing to good. all the new people. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. We were just talking about what we're gonna start cooking tomorrow. Get stuff ready. It'll be really fun. Got all our boys coming, so looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm doing good. I played hooky today. I did not do any work. <laughs> I really needed to, but... Take a de-stress day. I, I did. I looked up right there when I did that, and I got a little too far over, so I'm going to grab a little white. <clears throat> Sorry, got a little... Uh, Choked up there. I know. What was I talking about? My kids. <laughs> Your kids, yeah. Spencer, oh, poor Spencer. <laughs> Not only is he going to have braces, but he's also having to have all of his wisdom teeth pulled. So he's having all four wisdom teeth pulled t tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are you sure you want to do it just before Thanksgiving? And he was like, yeah, he just wants to get over with while he's out of school because he don't want to miss any school. So, which is hilarious because I would have been like, Whatever excuse I could have had to miss some school. <laughs> uh, maybe not. He he knows better. He knows that he, he's just going to have to make it up later. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color. I made a little bit brighter. Kind of more of the greens in this. Or more of the yellow color tone in that. So the first one was kind of a more of a blue green. And this one's going to have a little bit more gray. gray um, yellow green. Just a little... Keeping it very light and kind of just dry brushing this on. I don't want it super detailed. There we go. Very soft and wintry. So yeah, in the uh, the show Saturday, mm -hmm. it was the polar mm -hmm. bear. Yeah. And uh, through all the generous donations that we received, uh, we'll be able to support... 
Dennis Fast. Dennis Fast. <laughs> yes. I was really excited about that. Y'all were really generous for him. I, I really appreciated that. I almost said Doritos. Um, not Doritos. Not it was Doritos. Not Doritos. Yes. And I don't know why I was going to say Doritos, <laughs> but. Probably because it's almost dinner time and you're hungry. Yes. So sorry, Dennis, for <laughs> thinking you're Doritos. To substitute you with Doritos, but. He's like on a desert island. He's starting to see hallucinations. He's dreaming of Doritos now. <laughs> I told Angela before the show started, my brain is full of so much useless junk right now. <laughs> From work. From yeah. work. You just can't imagine. Oh, no. I can. All right. Going to fill in the heart now. And here again, I'm just going to kind of tap in so my edges are... Perfect, because this is felt, so it's going to have kind of, not rough edges, but, you know, they're a little bit fuzzy. And I'm going with straight cadmium red here. Nice and bright, and I know, going full out. Don't get too excited. It's all that right. is red. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's pretty. <laughs> So the reason I'm doing this now is because um, I want to let this gray dry before we do our another coat on it. And then we're going to let this red dry because we're going to have a couple more layers on it too. So I'm kind of doing the medium. Medium color. We'll put a little bit of shadows in there, just a little bit. And then a little bit of the highlight color as well. Oh, it's already looking pretty good. Looking like winter mittens. Definitely think I'm just going to do the one tonight because we're already halfway through and we're still got a little bit left to do. So I think I'm going to use, let me see. I think I'm going to use this smaller brush. I'm going to use number one for now. And I'm going to use this gray. So I'm going to what I've got there make a lot lighter gray so quite a bit of white here there we go it's a nice big pile of just really bright gray there and I still have that kind of medium gray too because I'm going to need that too and I'm just going to kind of lightly drag it in the direction of these stitches. I'm not going to try to do every little line, but I'm just going to try to kind of give it that sort of mitten texture. curves out, follows that curve of the thumb a little bit. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between these. I actually think I'm going to do it more like this. I'm just going to dab little lines. Not try to do them straight, but just kind of dab them. There we go. That's a little bit better, I think. Don't worry about your dark areas. We're going to go back over those with our shadows. If you did the owl, this is going to be the same kind of idea as the owl. We're going to do this texture first, and then we're going to go back in and shadow it so that we get some depth. This time I'm going to kind of do it sideways a little bit and leave a little bit bigger gaps. Like that. 
So I think mittens are like naps. In what way? That as a kid, I hated mittens just like I hated naps. Right. And now as an adult, I think they're awesome. Yeah. Just like naps. <laughs> Agreed. That was a useless fact for everybody. I'm bringing it I think hard. it's cute. I'm bringing it hard tonight. I think it's cute, hon. Okay. Good job. And, I mean, if we wanted to really do it kind of more like mitten style, you could do these little V shapes. That's what... That's what... Uh, Maybe just on a few of them. Hashtag mitten style. <laughs> All right, so as it comes around here, I'm going to kind of curve it as if it's got a little you can kind of see what I'm doing there cute probably put these I think I want to do these a little closer together fit another one in here I'm just going to get a darker color here and fill that back in As they're along that edge, they're going to be closer together. And then as they get flattened out, they're going to be farther apart. So these two are going to be closer. These ones are going to be closer along those edges than the ones in the middle here. Okay. following this curve of this thumb so it's going to kind of curve down this way like this it looks kind of funky right now but it'll look better once we hopefully get the shadowing on here There's our little mittens. Cute. We're going to let that dry. going to get our angle brush back. I'm going to grab the red, add a little bit of this gray to it. Darken it up a little bit. And I'm going to use it in the ditch where the stitching is going to go. Create a little shadow right there. And then I'm just going to kind of dab up here. It's going to be darker down here. So up here I'm just going to kind of do a few little dabs thinner. But down here I'm going to do a little bit darker. And I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. So it's I'm able to kind of dab it in without going too far into the other color. And if I do, I can grab some of that red and go back over the edge a little bit. Just blend it in a little bit, but I'm not really trying to do real smooth. See how kind of I've tapped it so that it looks like sort of feltish, feltish. Is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> feltish. Feltish. Fielded. Felt. <laughs> Felding. Oh, I don't want to get Felding. into that past tense argument again. <laughs> <laughs> I lost that one actually. Yeah, you got called I out. I was wrong. I 
the throng wrong. Felt it did. <laughs> All right, I'm going in here with some watered down paint. So this is the gray, watered down. You should be able to see your palette through it. If you don't, then it's too it's too thick. Add enough water that you're when you pull it like this, you're seeing a lot of the palette through. And then you know that it's it's dark enough for your to do this. Okay, so I'm going to go right along that edge and pull over the top of my stitched lines and maybe in the ditch a little bit. Just shadowing those. Just a little bit. I got two questions for you when yes. you have time. Go for it. Okay, I'll ask them in reverse order here. Okay. So the first question is, how long does it take for your eyes and mind to pick up background colors? Ooh. I don't know. I, I really don't. Um, that's a good question. I think that it, um, if you learn to draw, it will help. It'll help a lot. So if you decide to, you know, take the, if that's something you're really working towards, I would take the time to, to work on some drawing and then, uh, it'll really help with everything else in your art. You'll, you'll see things differently. That's, that's really what drawing's about is seeing things differently. So I can say you know, that yeah. about two months ago, mm -hmm. I was outside walking mm -hmm. and I really noticed for the first time that a completely blue sky wasn't the same color blue from horizon to horizon. Oh. And it's all because really? of Never you. Never noticed that No, before? that, you know, you look straight up, it's much deeper and darker mm -hmm. and it's much more whiter. As right. you get to the horizon, and you know, I had never noticed that before. Interesting. Just like it was just all blue. Right. You know. Okay, and then the second question is more lighthearted. Okay. Craig would like to know if the world was to end tomorrow, and mm -hmm. you could only paint one more thing. Ooh. What would that be? Oh. Um. Hmm. Good question. I think I would paint. Uh, something like that flower garden that I did with the poppies and the wildflowers and stuff. Um, I did it last fall, I think, or last in the spring, maybe summer ish. Where is that canvas? Which uh, one? The one with the poppies on it that I had. I'm not sure what I did with it. Poppies? Yeah, it had the, I had it out in the living room for a long time. Remember? No. Okay. It's it's long. It's long and thin. You painted it? I painted it, yeah. I'll look for it. You keep painting. Okay, it's probably on that bottom there somewhere. It's the same size as that bare canvas there. Okay. It's like a hiding go seek in here. Mark's looking for it amongst the two hundred other paintings in my studio right now. I found the eyes. No. And that was fun, but I wouldn't like want it to be the last thing I painted. So is that what you would paint if it was the last painting? What? The poppies? So you were answering yeah. the question. Yeah, I would, okay. for sure. Something like it. Maybe not that exact one again, but right. something like it. Okay, these and that. I don't know. I came and came in. Mark sounds like he's tearing down my studio over there. I can't, I'm not going to find it. Okay. I don't know what I did with it. Because I, uh, I switched it out when I got out the Christmas and fall paintings. I took it down. I don't know where I put it. Okay. Oh, it's cute. It's cute. All right, so now I'm going to grab some white, even whiter than the, just a little bit whiter than what we did before, and just add some little highlights to just a few of these areas here. And I'm not going on the same lines. I'm trying to kind of Maybe do a little V's just to 
a little bit more detail. And not going down into the dark areas at all. Just kind of keeping where the light is the brightest. little V's kind of help break it up give it a little suggestion you don't have to do them everywhere as long as you've got a like a little suggestion of these V shapes your mind is gonna kind of fill in the rest it's it's interesting how it works like that you know just as long as you have a few of them in those areas where you're getting a little ooh, ooh, ooh. okay I know okay so you can see kind of like right here there's little V's Right here, maybe do a little V's. Just a little bit brighter. That'll give it that little texture, the mitten feel. And we've got the lines in there, which give it the, you know, the uh, feeling of the cabling. And now we're just kind of adding just a little bit of detail, just to kind of fool your eye into thinking that the whole thing is done with these little bees. Now I don't have to do the whole thing. Just doing a few. And I'm kind of going right over the top of my lines. Now if you're doing this with kids, you can totally just, I would just kind of dab it on. I wouldn't worry about this part. I would probably just do that first layer that I did and call that good enough you know just do it kind of try to get the dark areas around the sides and try to get lighter colors in the middle and I wouldn't worry about going into all these kind of detail but you know if you're wanting to give it a little extra detail then I would do this okay oh, Jesus. they want to know if you knit or crochet don't oh my gosh <laughs> I've tried oh it was a disaster you cross stitched many years I did ago. I did I'm gonna do little dots for this yeah I did I I cannot I cannot knit I tried I we we had our book club did a like a knitting night one night you know and because several of them knit and I spent the and I'm <sighs> I can craft, darn it. I know <laughs> I have good hand-eye coordination. I cannot knit for the life of me. It's one of those things I really wish I could do, but I just I haven't. Now, I'm sure I could figure it out, but it would be very difficult. Like it's not I'm not naturally gifted at it, so I I, I can't say that I, you know, I and couldn't. Your, and I your guess. mom knits, right? Or crochets. Mom does. Yeah, I know. It's in there somewhere. I just can't <laughs> figure it out. Uh, I don't know. I had a big tangled mess. I tried and try, I tried crocheting and now I used to crochet a little bit, but um, I'm going up over the top. So you can see where uh, my shadow is right here. Um, I'm going just above that on these highlighted parts and that will kind of give it that look of, you know, cause this part is thicker. You know, the stitches as they go around the corner, they're, they're raised up and they're thicker. So we're raising this part up just by going outside our, our lines on those parts leaving the dark um see that I don't know if I'm I'm explaining that well well but this dark part is ending right here and the highlighted part is coming down just a little bit longer not not a lot but just a little bit and it will help create that illusion that the knit is thicker in that part as it comes around the edge of the so right in here, highlighting these. Oh, it's looking really cute. I like it. I like it a lot. This is exactly what I was hoping it would look like. I'm glad when things work out. I've never tried to paint a mitten like this before, so I wasn't 100% sure exactly how to do it. 
easily, you know. I mean, I'm sure you could spend hours on it doing every single little uh, detail of the knit, but it would be very tedious. So I was trying to kind of figure out how to simplify it. I think this is the way to do it. Okay, doing a little bit of the highlighting on our sleeves of our sweater. Just kind of picking some stripes to do. There, I'm going to grab my dark. Clean this out. If I can find some more of that black. There we go. I'm going to go in here and kind of darken that up. Right there, darken it up. Anywhere else that you can see where it kind of needs a little extra shadow. There we go. All right, and then on our heart, we'll grab that red, a little bit of that black. So I'm using that color that we used before, and I'm going to do my stitches with this color first, all the way around, maybe even a little bit thicker than I am going to end up with my other stitches, because I want this to show just a little bit around the outside of my white stitching. Gonna be subtle but it'll be glad that we did this because it'll give it just that much more detail okay there then I'm grabbing white I did not use the unbleached titanium at all I don't know what a waste we need to get that back in the tube young lady it is a waste I don't like to waste paint but So you can see where I'm kind of coming just alongside or to one side of that shadow that I did, hopefully. So, and I'm curving these lines just a little bit. To make them look more like stitches. They're not perfectly straight in our picture. And a little bit of this is showing at the bottom over here, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit in between my stitches over on here. And then you can go outside the edge. Remember, like just like our stitches here, this white is coming wrapping around the outside of that red, so it's not going to end right at the same point as the red. It's going to kind of come out just a little bit outside that border. Go to the red. There we go. And then I'm going to go in with this black, the red, and just do a little dark dot everywhere that that ends in our fabric right there. And if it's too much, you can kind of dab it off. It's a little bit dark right there. Right. There's our little stitched heart. Why it looks real, doesn't it? Crazy. Well, I'm gonna grab this brush now. I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow, just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna add it to the red. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of yellow, and then the white. So it's a little highlight color for my heart. The yellow just keeps it from turning pink. And I'm just gonna dab in some highlight on my heart here. 
Oh, right in the middle there, just a little bit. If it's not bright enough. And using this brush will kind of give a little fuzzy texture. You don't need a lot, so just a little tiny bit gives it that little fuzzy felt feeling. You can grab a little bit more red, go over the edges a little bit if I need to, like right up next to the stitching if if those dots are looking too perfectly round. Whatever, but I think that's pretty good. Right, and then uh, to finish it, so we can add a name or a date, like if you just got married or you've got a you know, new baby or something like that, um, you could add you know, the date. Um, I think we should, we should do this for Jordan and Courtney, huh? They just got married. So we'll do 10, 10, 13, 18. Try to fit it in there. And I'm going to use this dark red and just dab it in. With the dark color. They got married in October. Will be their ornament for their tree. You do names the same way, whatever you're doing, just dab in a little bit of that first. And then I'm going to grab the white, just like we did the border stitching, but this time I'm going to do little little dots or little dabs for the, the numbers. So just to make it look like it's stitched or, you know, the letters. You do the, the same way, just little dots to fill it in. This is really easy. You can use a pen if you, you know, aren't comfortable with using a brush. You could use a toothpick. And I've done this with, if I was doing this with kids, I'd probably have them use a toothpick because they can kind of manipulate that pretty well. And they can get uh, get these little dashes and things with their toothpick. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. Hopefully they think so. Because they're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad now. Too bad. We don't know anybody else that was married that day. <laughs> <laughs> so... could give it to somebody. Here's some lottery numbers for you. <laughs> I know there's only three, but it's a start. <laughs> I just think you, there's a ton of different ways that you could, you know, personalize this. Names would be really cute if you did like different colors for each member of your family. Uh, you know, different color hearts or different colored mittens or whatever. Um, it's just all kinds of different ways to make it special. All right, I'm going to call that good. Let's put on okay. some snow and what? So they would like to know <clears throat> if they wanted the sleeves a little wider, what would they do? The sleeves wider? Yeah, These wider, sleeves? yes. Oh, wider? Um, yeah, just to add white to them. Here, I'll do it. Just glaze over it? Y yeah, I would just... Um, let's just, I'm going to tap with this brush and so while you're doing that, um, so you had mentioned that this is going to be a Christmas ornament mm -hmm. and you suggested that you could, uh, screw in an eye hook on the top. Yes. Right. Yes. So you can buy those at a hardware store. <clears throat> right. Multi-pack. Once you grab one out of the um, thing there, hun, I've got, I've got a pack of them down, down there at the bottom. I've got a little thing from the store 
that's got there we go a little bit more white there it's better yeah just like this they work really good if you've got a like an out an awl or something that you can uh, or even a nail that you can hammer in to start your hole and then these just twist right in um, really easily and then you can hook your ribbon onto it um, and they're really easy to find so that's that's what I usually do with these that way they kind of hang a little bit straighter because if you put the the ribbon on the back side they tend to angle forward on your tree um, so if you put it right in the center they hang straighter on your tree so that's just what I would do all right so I'm gonna make sure that I don't get I'm just gonna put a little a little piece of towel right over my numbers because I don't want any of that to get covered but I do want some splatters on my heart I just don't want them right there so I'm just going to hold that on in place or when your name when you do your name or whatever um, all right getting the white here actually before I do this I think I'm going to I think I might use this unbleached titanium and just add a little around the edges just because it was looking a little bit of white you know, a little bit too white so kind of not dirty it up but you know what I mean like kind of give it another tone back in there and we can even do a little bit of the gray or a little bit of the blue if we want just to kind of give it a little bit of a vignette feeling, make it feel a little cozier. I've just got watered down paint here. I'm putting on kind of thinly. There we go. I think that that feels a little cozier now. And we could even, um, you know, if you wanted to warm up your mittens some, you could use some of that unbleached titanium in your mittens um, to give them a little bit of a warmer feel. I might do that just a little bit, just a tiny bit, since we've, we're right at the end here, just add a little bit of this unbleached titanium and add it to your mittens and some of your highlight areas. Kind of warm it up, make it not quite so cold feeling, which, you know, if you want to leave it that way, that's fine too. warm it up a little bit yeah I like that I think okay so let's do our splatter so I've added the white uh, water to my white so that it's if I tap it on my paper t or my palette you can see how easily it's coming off uh, it should drip off of there pretty easily I'm going to use my paper towel and just kind of wipe off this back side of here so that it doesn't drip too much at only one time. And, woo. Splatter, splatter, splatter. I want some right there. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to. Voila. Stab right here where that big one was just to get a kit that off there. It's a little too big. Damp towel here. There we go. Maybe right there. All right, I'm going to call that good. Isn't that fun? I hope you try it. It's kind of a fun little projects. Uh, I'd love to see kind of your take on it, what you guys decide to do with it. If you decide to add more colors or do whatever it is you decide to do with yours. Um, you could even add a little white along the branches. If you do your color, you know, on your background a little bit darker, you could add little maybe white dabs along these branches here like snow. I don't know. There's all kinds of things you can do. I'm going to call it good, though. 
So if they don't want to draw this. Right. We have, yes, we will have it available on my Patreon page there. It's a dollar a month for traceables, so you can just... All the traceables. All the traceables that you want. Get all the traceables. from All the traceables for a dollar a month. February 2017, as many as you want. Yes. Download it as many times as you want. Yes. Yep. So it's a pretty good deal, especially if you don't like to draw or don't want to, you know, have to do that part of it. And uh, it's already kind of gives you a head start on it. And, uh, yeah. Kinda and there's fun. other levels. Yeah, there's other levels. We just did our bonus video for the $1 level, so, or the $5 level, I mean. You need to show the picture. Yeah, I'm going to zoom out. It turned out pretty good. That so that was our cool. $5 level for this month. Um, about three hours, was it? Something like that. Mm -hmm. About three hour video. Um, so yeah, kind of fun showing the different pine trees. This part was challenging up here, you know, just kind of, I think this was kind of a, one of the more difficult ones we've done, um, just because of this part of it, um, up here. Pine trees weren't too bad, I don't think, but the, just this little part right around those mountains. It's a little bit tricky, but I, yeah, I think it's, uh, it was a lot of fun, so I enjoyed it. All right, I just noticed that this thumb is a little bit too far out. I think I brought it out too far, so I'm going to pull it in just a little bit right there. Just tap it along that edge. And then there's a $10 level that gives you the traceables, the bonus video, plus access to a special Facebook group. Right. Where you do more art chats. You do a four-week tutorial. Yeah, this is what we did in that one. Question. So this is one we did I'm last month. Out. Um, in there. So this took three weeks to finish in there. We did about an hour of a lesson for three weeks. So anyhow, yep. Do all kinds of fun different things. So the Patreon folks, we just do um, things that I can't really do on these uh, regular uh, video nights. So if you want a little bit more in-depth one-on-one um, lessons. Uh, it's definitely a lot smaller live shows, so you get a lot more one-on-one uh, -on -one attention questions answered and that kind of thing. So if that's kind of something that you're interested in, that would be something I would definitely suggest. We do all kinds of fun stuff in there, polls, and they get to pick what, what we paint every month. So mm -hmm. it, it worked out pretty good. I really enjoyed it. This looks pretty cool, honey. Thanks. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I think you guys, I think you guys like it. it. I don't think it was very difficult at all. I really do. I really don't. No, and, and people are suggesting that they could do Christmas cards and things like that with Absolutely. this too. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it would I mean, be really cool. Kinds of, I'm looking forward to seeing them posting them in the Facebook Me group. Me too. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, have a happy Thanksgiving. We will not be here Saturday. We're going to be with our family. and so, But we will be back next Tuesday night with another video for you. I think we're doing a snowman. Or is it Christmas. the door? I think the it's door. the door. We're doing the door. Christmas the is taken off. Yeah, Christmas has started. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so I hope you join us then and have a happy Thanksgiving with your families. And uh, we will. We are very thankful for you guys. I hope. I know we've said it before, but uh, it is the truth. We're so thankful for you guys that uh, watch with us and uh, that we've gotten to get to know you guys a little bit. Uh, we hear such wonderful stories all the time. Get such sweet emails and comments, and uh, it just really makes us feel really good. Very thankful for getting to do what we do. So and all our friends from all over the world. Exactly. We really do feel that feel that way. Yeah. It's awesome. So uh, you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving, and we will see you next Tuesday night. Thanks for watching. Bye.